Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit and demonstrate how Azure AD works with Partner Center and other Microsoft Cloud properties and how you want to get access to your Azure AD tenant and how to go about doing that. I'm going to demonstrate that process. Microsoft uses Azure AD to store users, groups, applications, etc. for a lot of their different cloud offerings. This includes things like Office 365 and Partner Center. When I create a new tenant with Office 365, behind the scenes, Microsoft is creating an Azure AD tenant for that Office 365 tenant. That Azure AD tenant will be used to store users and groups. The same thing is true when I'm creating a new partner inside of the Partner Center. Once my account has been approved and I've been created as a partner, behind the scenes, Microsoft has created an Azure AD tenant. Users for that partner can be seen. If I log into my account on Partner Center, as you see I am here, if I scroll down and I click on View Users under User Management, I would see a list of all the users that I have inside of this tenant. Now these users are stored in the Azure AD directory. The same thing would be true for Office 365. If I had created an Office 365 tenant, I'd have an Azure AD tenant that was created behind the scenes. And the, ad the administrative interface for Office 365 gives me the ability to uh, create users and groups and manage them um, straight from the Office 365 management interface. Now, sometimes the tools that are given to us by these different interfaces, such as Office 365, or as in this case, Partner Center, they don't give us everything that we need. For example, they maybe have limited access to being able to manage applications. So in this case here, if I go to Partner Center and click on the API link on the left-hand side, you see here that it's referencing an Azure AD application. Now, there's a lot more stuff that we can do with this. We can create applications. We can have a lot more fine-grained um, access to both the applications and users and groups. But all of that control is going to be provided to us through the Azure management portals. Um, there's different portals that are available to us. Um, there's the Blade version. And then at the time of this recording, which is in mid-May of 2016, we also have the more legacy portal that's the white and uh, blue portal. Um, that's the one that we're going to have to use because at the time of this recording, Azure AD is not available to us in the more Blade-associated uh, portal. Now, why would I need access to this? Well, for instance, in this case for Partner Center, Partner Center gives us the ability to register a new Azure AD application but it only supports web applications. It doesn't support native apps, like working with apps on the console. I can register an existing app or onboard an existing app that was created as a native app, but it, that native app would have already had to been created before I can onboard it in Partner Center. The way I would create that app is through the management portal. So what I need to do is go work with the management portal. Now, the challenge with this is that I don't have access to this tenant yet. The way that we actually manage Azure AD tenants through the uh, Azure interfaces is by going logging in to one of the ma management portals. So if I come over here to manage.windowsazure.com, what we'll see here is I'm actually prompted to go ahead and log in to an Azure subscription. Now, I don't have an Azure subscription associated with my Azure AD tenant. I have one that I use for my own personal use. For example, maybe I've created it for my company and we're hosting other applications in Azure. Maybe I'm a developer and I've gotten my subscription through my MSDN subscription. Or maybe I just set up a standard trial account as just a regular old user from a, a public event that had happened recently. I have an, a subscription that's under this account right here, me at andrewconnell.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with this. This is a personal account. What this is gonna do is first prompt me for my username and password. So I'll log in and then I have multi-factor authentication set up with this. So let me type in that code that is showing up on my phone right next to me that you can't see right now. After the management portal opens, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the Active Directory section. And this is gonna show me a list of all of the Azure AD tenants that I have access to. Now, what does that mean? What this means is that the user that I'm currently logged in as, as you see my account up here in the top right corner, that account has been given global administrator access to all of my uh, all of these different directories that you see listed here. I have my, my directory right here for my company. I have another one down here that I got uh, from something along the line. And then I have all these other directories that I have access to. But the trick is, is I don't have access to my CSP account for my integration sandbox account. So what I need to do is I need to get access to it. Now the way that this works 
is that you have to go through a process of adding the current account that I'm in right here where I see the me at andrewconnell.com. I have to add this account as a global administrator to the Azure AD directory for my CSP tenant, my CSP account. Once that's done, the next time that I log in using this Azure subscription, I will see that Azure AD tenant tied up, uh, tied, tied in here and will be listed here. And then I can get into all the users and groups and applications. Now, this is something that you only have to do once. Um, you can do it as many times as you want. So if you have multiple developers, they can each be granted access to the ad to the admin to the as a uh, administrator to this tenant just keep in mind that they have access to everything so maybe you don't want your developers to do this with your production csp account and maybe you want to do it with your integration sandbox account but let me show you what the process looks like i'm going to come over here and click new and i'm going to say i want to create a new directory and i'm going to pick custom create now here i have an option if i want to create a new directory or use an existing directory if this is not showing up for you, then you're currently logged in to your Azure subscription using an Azure AD uh, work or, or school account. That's not going to work. You're going to need to have a Microsoft account, an MSA account, also known as a Live ID. You're going to need to have one of those accounts that's tied to an Azure subscription in order to um, have this dialogue pop up and that, see where it says use an existing directory. What it's going to do is it's going to give you a message and say what's going to happen now is that we're going to log you out and then we're going to prompt you to log in using a global administrator account for the Azure AD directory that you want to get access to. So effectively, I have to have the administrative credentials for another Azure AD directory in order to add my current user to that account, to that directory. So here I'm going to go ahead and say I'm ready to be signed out. And it says you're going to be signed. You have to sign as the global admin of the directory you want to add. So in that case, I want to be signed in as a, as a global administrator of my CSP Azure AD account, otherwise known as the admin account that I'm logging into with Partner Center. So I go ahead and check that off. It's logging me out and then it's going to prompt me to log in. I'm going to use this account here that starts with blue at the beginning of it. And I'm going to type in my password. And then I'll click sign in. What's going to happen now is Azure is going to say, here's the name of the directory. This is going to make the Microsoft account, me at andrewconnell.com, the one that I was just subscribed in, subscribed and logged into uh, with just a minute ago that's tied to an Azure subscription. It's going to make it a global admin on this, this, uh, this directory here that you see listed. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And now it's done. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out because currently I'm logged in with the global administrator account for that Azure AD directory. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. And now it's going to prompt me if I want to sign in again. So here I'm going to choose my Microsoft account that I use to log into my Azure subscription with. So here we'll go ahead and log in. I need to pass in my MFA code to log in again. And this time we're going to wait for the Azure management portal to go ahead and load. And I'm going to pick the active directory section and we should see the new directory showing up. And sure enough, we do. Here's the additional directory that was not there before. And just to prove to you what happened, if I select this directory and I go into a list of all the users, we should see three users. We should see the global administrator account for the directory that we signed in as just a minute ago. We should also see the other account that was there before and the one that I just added. And just to prove the point, I'm going to go ahead and log out and let's come over here to Partner Center again. Once I'm logged in, if I scroll down and click on View Users, I should see three users listed, just like we saw in the Azure Management Portal just a minute ago. And there you see it. We do have three users, including the one that I had just created. You can see here that I can even remove this user as well. So even if this, this is not a permanent thing, it's a temporary thing. If I went in and I removed that user in the middle, me at andrewconnell.com, either here or from the Azure Management Portal as one of my other global administrators, then I would effectively be blocking that user from having access to this directory in the future. The next time they logged in with Azure and the Azure Management Portal, they would not see that account showing up anymore. So in this video, I showed you how to associate an existing Azure AD directory with an Azure subscription. And the reason I did that is so that I could have management access to that directory using the Azure Management Portals. 
The reason I need that is because sometimes tools that are given to me that expose the Azure AD directory contents, contents like users, groups, and applications, maybe they don't give me everything that I need access to. For instance, maybe the Office 365 administrative portal doesn't give me everything I need. Maybe the Partner Center administrative portal doesn't give me everything I need. In this case, this makes it easy for me to grab those things now.